Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the weekly current affairs session for environment, science and technology and some parts of geography. Today we do not have a really news, any news from geography point of view. So, we are uh, keeping it to just environment and science and technology for this day. I am Surbhi Sardana and we will be covering the weekly current affairs from November 16 to November 23 for these two subjects. Let us see what is the index that we have for today, what are the topics that we will be taking today. The first topic is climate change performance index, the second would be loss and damage fund, the third is launch of India's first private rocket or space vehicle that is Vikram S. The fourth one is Artemis 1 and since we are talking about Artemis 1 and a lot of moon missions have been launched and planned by various countries, we will also be looking at the importance of moon because that is important for your mains as well as prelims point of view. So let us move on to uh, the first topic but before that let me remind you that this weekly current affairs is running in parallel with our website which is rajaisacademy.com. Also, through this session for example here we have five topics out of these topics this topic the fifth one has been taken in detail and a question has been framed for your mains daily answer writing practice we are running an initiative called seize the mains on our youtube channel from monday to saturday that is being taken by me every day we discuss one question from current affairs and we tell you that how to build a model answer around it, how to build a good answer for it, how to write a good creative answer which can fetch you more and more marks and mains so that you make it to the final list in your first attempt or at the earliest possible. So the question for today, this is also uploaded on our website. The question is looking at space exploration missions of various space agencies. A significant moon rush has been witnessed in the past decade and continues to grow even further. What is the uh, what importance does the moon hold for mankind? Answer in 150 words. So, this appears to be a long question but the answer has to be very short just in 150 words because the question wala part is very small. If uh, you know just go to the website, check out this question, check out the model answer and do watch seize the mains for this uh, questions answer at 9pm on our YouTube channel today. You can also refer to that playlist for more and more questions and answers. By that time, by tomorrow or day after maximum, try to post your answer to this. Try to write a model answer and post it on our website. Our team evaluates your answers entirely free of cost in the next 48 hours. So yes, let's move on to the first topic for the day, the climate change performance index of 2023. First of all, let's see who launches this index. So there is a NGO called German Watch. It is an NGO which is based in Bonn, Germany as you can see. Uh, it is a scoring system. The climate change performance index is a scoring system for many countries ke liye, and it is released by German Watch. Now what is the purpose of this index? What is the index? Ka kaam kya hai? See, uh, there are many countries that use fossil fuels use karti hai, apni energy needs meet karne ke liye. For example, to give fuel to their vehicles, to run their vehicles, to run their industries, to produce electricity. So, there are many countries that have a list of 63 and they call uh, the list of 63 countries plus the European Union. So, 63 aisi nations are in which there are 63 nations ke alawa, European Union ki kafi countries which are काफी ज़्यादा fossil fuels पे dependent है, which use a lot of coal, petroleum, crude oil, natural gas, and which release a lot of pollution. So as you can see, the name indicates climate change performance index. So this index is talking about the efforts these countries, these 63 countries, including European Union, ये जो countries हैं, जो सबसे ज़्यादा pollute, uh, polluting countries हैं पूरी दुनिया की, what are the efforts that these countries are making to control climate change? So that is basically to assess their climate change performance, and hence it is known as the climate change performance index. Again, I'm repeating that this is released by an NGO called German Watch. So don't get confused when you see this index in your prelims. Now, uh, the good part is that India has improved its rank a lot. So uh, India has been ranked at the 8th place. 
इंडिया का जो रैंक है आउट ऑफ दी सिक्सटी थ्री कंट्रीज इट हैज़ कम एट दी एट्थ प्लेस एंड दे से दैट इंडिया हैज़ इम्प्रूवड लॉट टू ब्रिंग इट्स कार्बन एमिशंस डाउन और टू कंट्रोल क्लाइमेट चेंज सो नाउ वी हैव नेशनली डिटर्मिन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन जो हमारा पैरिस क्लाइमेट डील है उसके अकॉर्डिंग हर कंट्री को हर पार्टिसिपेटिंग कंट्री को कुछ नेशनली डिटर्मिन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन देने हैं बाई ट्वेंटी थर्टी सम टारगेट वॉज सेट बाई इंडिया दैट वी विल ब्रिंग डाउन आर एमिशंस टू थर्टी टू थर्टी फाइव परसेंट एंड लेटर फोर्टी फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ जी डी पी दैट वॉज Uh, as compared to what uh, was the emission levels in 2005 also a lot of afforestation was planned 175 uh, gigawatt of electricity generation through non fossil fuel based resources that was planned and a lot of efforts have been carried out by the government of india so this uh, index since it has given india a very high rank so this has applauded india for its performance they say that uh, India is on track to meet its 2030 emission targets compatible with a well below 2 degree uh, Celsius scenario pre industrial level ke jo hamare climate ke levels the jo global warming ke levels the usse 2 degree Celsius se niche tak humne uh, temperature ko control karke rakhna hai we have to control the temperature levels to well 2 degree Celsius below pre industrial levels and India is on track to meet its that target so also uh, we discussed in last week's current affairs discussion that india has updated its nationally determined contributions the long term contributions long term targets have been updated by india so yes india has announced a net zero achieving a balance between greenhouse gases which are released into the atmosphere and a balance between the amount of gases that are absorbed from the atmosphere so net zero ka target india ne announce kar diya hai for 2070 For 2070, we have announced this target, and Indian government, the efforts of Indian government and all the other sectors, they are well in line with achieving the net zero target and bringing climate change to a halt. So yes, now what this uh, this is the website of CCPI. This is the website of uh, this uh, particular index. So they say that there are three countries. chile morocco and india which have consistently performed well in the ccpi and are closing in on leading countries which are the leading countries denmark and sweden denmark and sweden have been ranked 4 and 5 they say that out of all these 63 countries in 63 countries mein jitni bhi countries hain inke efforts itne zyada acche nahi hain efforts of none of these countries are good enough to control global warming to control climate change so the special part about this index is that the first three ranks first three ranks of this index they are not given to anyone kisi bhi country ko pehle teen ranks nahi diye jate because they feel that no country in the world deserves any rank out of first three so jo ranking shuru hoti hai wo ranking 4 se shuru hoti hai and at rank 4 and 5 you have denmark and sweden and uh, between rank 6 to 8 after that you have chile morocco and india india is at rank 8 which is a huge achievement for india so also they have said that the largest emitters are china and united states of america usa ka rank 53 hai and china has gone down in its ranking and almost 13 places ka jo uh, china ka rank hai wo drop down ho gaya again you know comparison with neighboring countries especially the highest polluters is very important for your exam so china has dropped down 13 ranks and its uh, latest rank is 52 and 53rd rank is of united states of america so these two are the biggest polluters of the world what are the uh, last ranks which have been occupied yes the 63rd rank has been occupied by iran 62nd by saudi arabia and 61st kazakhstan last three countries so these three are the highest polluters then you have us and china at 53 and 52 uh good news for india because we've improved a lot but that they say that the renewable energy pathway for of india is not on track to the 2030 target to iske liye hame bahut zyada efforts karne hain plus some of our efforts are decreasing the global warming and preventing climate change while other efforts or other activities that are taken by the government or private sector they are aiding global warming so a balance has to be maintained 
इंडेक्स के भी आगे बहुत सारे पार्ट्स होते हैं एटलीस्ट फोर पार्ट्स आर देर टू दिस इंडेक्स सो दो पार्ट्स इन इंट्रिकेसी दे आर नॉट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर एग्जाम जस्ट रिमेंबरिंग द नेम ऑफ दिस इंडेक्स हु रिलीज इट वॉट इज द रैंकिंग वॉट इज द इम्प्रूवमेंट दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर यू एंड डोंट फॉरगेट टू कोट दिस इंडेक्स द इम्प्रूवमेंट दैट इंडिया हैज शोन ऑन दिस इंडेक्स इन योर मेन्स आंसर्स वेन एवर यूर राइटिंग आंसर्स फॉर मेन्स एनवायरमेंट सेक्शन कोट दिस इंडेक्स ऑल्सो आप अपने इंडेक्स की भी एक सेपरेट शीट मेंटेन कीजिए हैव अ सेपरेट शीट फॉर डेटा एंड अ सेपरेट शीट फॉर फैक्ट्स वेर यू राइट अबाउट सच रिपोर्ट्स ऑल और यू कैन पुट इट इन द डेटा शीट ऑल्सो दैट सो दैट यू कैन यूज इट इन योर एनवायरमेंट आंसर्स डायरेक्टली नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द सी ओ पी ट्वेंटी सेवन अपडेट सी ओ पी ट्वेंटी सेवन फाइनली कंक्लूडेड ऑन नवम्बर एटीन and the final document uh, they released a loss and damage fund for climate reparations now what is this loss and damage fund see last week also we discussed about cop 27 conference of parties 27 to agar aapko clarity nahi hai ki united nations framework convention on climate change kya hai what is kyoto protocol what is uh, you know uh, conference of parties 27 that is being held on an annual basis so i would recommend that uh, go to the live tab on our youtube channel raja uh, raj malhotra is academy jo hamara youtube channel hai usme aap live wale tab par jaiye so in the live section because these videos are Are, uh, going to you live, so in the live section you will see the previous videos also. Also, we have a separate playlist for weekly current affairs, subject-wise current affairs. So refer to the previous week's video, November 16th's video, and things will get clear. That was the first topic that we took. So things will get clear here. We are just starting. What is the loss and damages fund for climate reparations that has been formed? Let's look at the headline first. So uh, key questions about who will manage the loss and damages fund. who will contribute and how much they will contribute have, have all been left to a transitional panel reporting to next year's cop 28 see so they uh, this hand indicates pay pay for the damage to you have done to the earth and as you can see it uh, signifies here pay for loss and damage and 1.5 degree centigrade uh, celsius target is there 1.5 degree celsius target is there under the Pri- uh, paris climate accord under the cop 21 jo world ka global warming ka jo level hai that should not exceed 1.5 degree celsius temperature as compared to the temperatures of pre industrial levels also what they say is that the countries which are in the southern areas southern areas mein hai ya jo low lying areas mein hai probably if there is an island country for example let's take the example of maldives or vanuatu so these countries these are small island countries agar global warming ka level badhta hai sea levels will rise sea levels will ri- levels will rise due to global warming and these ca- these countries these islands will get inundated ye islands jo hai ye doob jayenge so these are the people who belong to some countries which are most affected by climate change and these small countries in yahan par industries nahi aayi thi these are not responsible for climate change these are not the countries who who had set up big industries and released so much uh, you know pollution into the atmosphere that resulted in so much global warming so their livelihood their lives are at threat threat not just uh, livelihood but their lives and where they have been staying for so so long we have so many climate refugees all over the world and refugee problem is what we see all over the world uh, in such high spirit so these people they have they had been protesting that the rich countries which are developed countries now and which are still continuing to release a lot of pollution into the atmosphere they should be paying to all the losses that have occurred to earth and to our lives and livelihoods so this is pay for loss and damage and to you know to agree to their demands to agree that yes it is the responsibility of developed and highly polluting nations to give reparations to these countries which are at the risk of climate change which uh, you know famines occur on uh, on a, a regular basis in these countries droughts occur floods occur and you know their land is getting inundated so these people will get the benefits out of this fund either in the form of insurance grants that has to be decided as it is written here that uh, you know there will be a transitional panel transitional panel would be set up at cop 28 that is next year to decide that how the funds would be given and who will be contributing to the funds 
So earlier also we had this dollar hundred billion target, which was to be given by developed countries to the developing nations or to the low polluting nations, which are at the risk of, which are at the receiving end of climate change. So earlier also we had this dollar hundred billion billion target. Now a separate fund called loss and damage fund has been set up. Now there are some key features you need to focus about this loss and damage fund. Let's look at what are these key features. So the first feature is the location, uh, Sharmil, she Sharmil Sheikh, Egypt. Uh, this is where your COP27 was held. The planned monetary compensation under this fund is estimated to be nearly dollar 500 billion and rising by dollar 200 billion each year. Also, they say that it is a big win for poorer nations which have long called for funds, sometimes views as reparations because they are often the victims of climate worsened floods, droughts, heat waves, famines and storms despite having contributed little to the pollution that heats up the globe. So the fund would be largely aimed at the most vulnerable nations as I told you the island nations or the low lying nations or poor nations which are at the uh, which are at the receiving end of this climate change. So the the question here is about contribution who will contribute to this fund. So the uh, Earlier, the initial contributions aayenge, they will be from developed countries, yes for sure from developed countries and other private and public sources such as international financial institutions, World Bank included. World Bank is already aiding many of the developing or very poor nations in their you know, fight against climate change. So World Bank can be one of these, ADB can be one of these, uh, Asian Development Bank. So while major emerging economies such as China would not initially be required to contribute but there have been demands from China and India that they say that China and India are the biggest economies of the world, we, uh, India is the biggest market of the world. So uh, India and China should also be contributing to it and they say that uh, you know India is a country which is at the receiving end of climate change. We are seeing you know a change in the monsoon cycle, monsoon pattern. We see so many floods occurring on an yearly basis. The, the frequency or inten and intensity of tropical cyclones has increased in our country. So they say that will India be at the uh, will India be receiving uh, reparations from this fund or will India be a donor? So as of now India has taken a neutral stand that yes whenever uh, we have the capacity we donate, we help our neighboring nations also whenever there are times of need but as of now we do not have any compulsory, uh, any compulsions to donate to the fund. So yes uh, apart from this COP27 also uh, also you know concluded with a four year work program on climate action in agriculture and food security and on a just transition for energy use. What we will do is next week we will take COP27 briefly, we will cover everything that has been updated because you know this discussion uh, regarding COP27 has been happening on a weekly basis, we will uh, summarize it in next week's video and uh, you will get the final notes there. Also the PDF for this uh, presentation for this recording, the, in the entire PPT that is running here that is available on our telegram channel. So refer to that PDF, you don't have to make notes side by side, just download that and highlight and underline it according to your need. Alright, so the next news that we have for the day is launch or the testing launch of Vikram S rocket. Vikram S rocket launch highlights uh, India's first private rocket blast uh, blasted off successfully. So what are the details? See Vikram S is a single stage rocket fuel meant to test most systems and processes in Skyroot aerospace project ahead of the launch of Vikram 1 scheduled next year. Alright, so see earlier what was happening till a few years back only ISRO was sending their rockets to space and if there was any other country or any other agency who had to launch their satellites in space, kisi bhi or country ko ya kisi bhi startup ko apni satellite space mein bhejni hoti thi, so they had to contact ISRO, they had to contact the commercial arm of ISRO and ISRO ka jab uh, you know rocket uh, ready hota tha, tabhi satellites launch ho paati thi. But we've seen how well SpaceX, uh, SpaceX has done in the United States of America. A lot of other private sector agencies are coming up in the space sector. Bohut saare aise startups hain, jo ki apne chote rockets banate hain, aur chote chote satellites ko launch kar sakte hain. So they say that this space sector or launching of satellites into space, ye ek bohut bada market hai, jis mein bohut zada profits gain kiye ja sakte hain, but this is very untapped. Also, as you know that ISRO has launched a lot of successful missions starting from 1962 
when your incospar was created indian national committee on space research under the under the uh, chairmanship of dr vikram uh, vikram sarabhai is known as the father of india space mission unhi ke naam par uh, ye jo private agency hai sky route aerospace iska naam hai inhone vikram s rocket uh, dr vikram sarabhai ke naam par hi rakha hai so they say that uh, entry entry of private sector into space for example if we allow some company, companies or startups to make their own rockets and they can launch satellites for other countries or other companies on a for a commercial basis then a lot of employment can be generated we can see a lot of boost in our gdp and what not india is one of the five top most space faring nations of the world what is it that india has not done we are launching a mission to the sun we have our astronomical telescopes in space astrosat is already there exposat is coming in the next few years we are already working on gaganyaan chandrayaan has been completed successfully mangalyaan has been so successful so india is one of one of the top five countries who have technical capabilities in the space sector so it becomes very uh, you know important for us to let our our private agencies get into the space sector and launch their own missions so last week we discussed about the agni cool cosmos unhone apna engine ka ek part uh, uh, one of the rockets has been developed using 3d printing so what is 3d printing if you are not aware refer to the previous uh, week's video for science and tech and environment this time uh, vikram s iska jo launch tha is rocket ka kuch time pehle plan tha but due to uh, abnormal weather it was delayed so last week this launch was carried out this is uh, just a single staged rocket again i'm uh, you know telling it to you again and again aapka jo rocket hota hai aisa hi dikhta hai jaise aapke toy rockets dikhte hain here your payload is placed payload ya satellite or spaceship whatever you want to launch into space here it is placed ye jo aapka part hai this consists of fuel and engines so in the vikram s rocket it is just a single stage rocket means only one type of fuel and one engine has been used and that is your solid fuel in the vikram s rocket the subsequent vikram rockets honge jo ki sky route uh, aerospace develop karega they will be using cryogenic technology also your cryogenic technology uses oxygen that is converted into a liquid form at a very low temperature and hydrogen as fuel which is again converted into liquid for better storage at a very low temperature which are no, which is known as cryogenic temperatures bahut hi kam temperatures ko hum log cryogenic temperatures bolte hain so right now what they have done is they've launched the vikram s rocket into a sub orbital flight sub orbital flight mein inhone uh, it took off its first flight from the isro's shri harikota space port there are a very few areas from which rockets are launched we we'll launch rockets from thumba we we'll launch rockets from shri shri harikota missile testing hamari dr apj abdul kalam island se hoti hai uh, that is off the coast of uh, odisha again we are coming up with a new rocket launching uh, site that is in tamil nadu again that has been taken in the previous discussions the mission has been named praram the beginning the so you can in a way call it the beginning of the entry of private sector into space just imagine uh, you know agencies like sky route aerospace coming up and launching their having their own rockets right now what they have developed is SSLV small satellite launch vehicle jo ki bahut hi halki satellites ko space mein le ja kar orbit mein chhod payega orbit mein release kar payega so SSLV has been developed isro ka bhi apne paas ek SSLV hai uh, small satellite launch vehicle that can be you know assembled in just one week so for that purpose for launching satellites of up to 500 kg isro has its own sslv but now this uh, sky route aerospace have developed their own sslv and vikram s was the first part of it they have tested it successfully now uh, they've launched it successfully in the upcoming missions vikram 1 vikram 2 vikram 3 they plan to develop three rockets and to launch a lot of satellites to at least two indian satellites and one foreign satellites in, including the one by space kids india called funsat parts of which were developed by school students so that is very important here that school students are developing their own satellites right now the you know again factual information might not be very important but conceptual is ek sub orbital space flight mein gaya hai vikram s rocket what is your sub orbital space flight uh, for example आपको अगर इस हाइट तक जाना है दिस इज योर हाइट वन दिस इज योर हाइट टू इफ यू गो टेल हाइट वन 
यू टेक योर रॉकेट टिल हाइट वन द ग्रेविटी हेयर माइट बी सो स्ट्रॉन्ग कि रॉकेट आपका वापस गिर जाए बट इफ यू गो टिल हाइट टू ऑब्वियसली ग्रेविटी वुड बी लेसर एट दिस हाइट सो समाइम्स वॉट एवर रीच इज एट हाइट टू इट एक्चुअली एंटर्स इन टू अर्बिट अराउंड दी अर्थ सो वॉट इट हैज डन इज आपका जो ये हाइट वन तक रॉकेट गया है सो दैट इज अ सब ऑर्बिटल फ्लाइट सब ऑर्बिटल फ्लाइट मीन्स हेयर एट हाइट वन इट इज जस्ट टचिंग द कार्बन लाइन कार्बन लाइन इज वेयर योर स्पेस बिगिन्स एंड एटमोसफेयर एंड दैट इज एट द हाइट ऑफ हंड्रेड किलोमीटर सो ऑलमोस्ट एट द कार्बन लाइन को टच करके इन अ सब सब ऑर्बिटल फ्लाइट दैट इट विल नॉट एंटर द ऑर्बिट ऑब्वियसली हमने रॉकेट्स को ऑर्बिट में एंटर नहीं करवाना होता है हमने सैटेलाइट्स को या स्पेसशिप्स को ऑर्बिट में एंटर करवाना होता है बिकॉज वहाँ पर हमारी फंक्शनिंग होती है सो विक्रम एस विल नॉट एंटर द ऑर्बिट इट हैज बीन इट हैज टेकन अ सब ऑर्बिटल स्पेस फ्लाइट आई होप यू नो सब ऑर्बिटल स्पेस फ्लाइट इज क्लियर टू यू दैट समथिंग दैट इज बिलो द हाइट टू एंटर इन टू ऑर्बिट अराउंड दी अर्थ सो येस अगेन वट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दिस लॉन्च एक प्राइवेट एजेंसी के एक स्मॉल सेटेलाइट लॉन्च व्हीकल को डेवलप करने का क्या सिग्निफिकेंस है सो एज यू कैन सी दैट परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ विक्रम एस एंड इट्स इंजन कलाम एटी विल हेल्प टेस्ट एंड वैलिडेट टेक्नोलॉजीज इन द विक्रम स्पेस लॉन्च व्हीकल्स जो इनके विक्रम सीरीज स्पेस लॉन्च व्हीकल्स जो कि आने वाले टाइम में लॉन्च करने वाले हैं टू लॉन्च एक्चुअल सैटेलाइट्स सो इट विल हेल्प इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड लर्निंग द लेसन्स द कंपनी इज डिजाइनिंग थ्री विक्रम रॉकेट्स दैट विल यूज वेरियस सॉलिड एंड क्रायोजेनिक फ्यूल्स आपके जो सॉलिड फ्यूल्स होते हैं वो बहुत ज़्यादा थ्रस्ट दे देते हैं फर्स्ट स्टेज में ऑलवेज सॉलिड फ्यूल्स आर यूज और सेमाय और सॉलिड फ्यूल्स विद क्रायोजेनिक ऑक्सीडाइजर कैन बी यूज एज इसरो हैज टेस्टेड रिसेंटली हाइब्रिड फ्यूल यूज कर सकते हैं बट इन द फर्स्ट स्टेज वी मोस्टली यूज सॉलिड फ्यूल्स एंड देयर कोर स्ट्रक्चर बिल्ड यूजिंग कार्बन कॉम्पोजिट्स कार्बन कॉम्पोजिट्स दिस कैन बी स्टार्टेड अंडर नैनोटेक अगेन नैनोटेक हैज बीन टेकन इन द प्रीवियस वीकली करंट अफेयर्स डिस्कशंस The thrusters used for spin stability in the vehicle have been 3D printed. So 3D printing has been in news again. This topic becomes very important for your prelims and mains both. The entry of private players in the space sector in India with more private sector missions coming soon. Uh, we talked about Agni Cool Cosmos. Uh, you know, private sector. They say that almost hundred startups have registered with. in space or the uh, nsil in space is the regulating arm of private sector in the uh, uh, private companies in the space sector so they say that almost 100 startups in the space sector have registered with isro so this is a huge boost to our economy and to the employment that our country is about to see india space sector as i told you that we are amongst the top 5 space uh, space faring nations of the world uh, do not forget the name of dr vikram uh, sarabhai because again for your mains point of view uh, scientists are very important scientists who have made big contributions to this um, to the uh, development of science and technology in india so dr apj abdul kalam and dr vikram sarabhai they are very important dr vikram sarabhai is the father of india's space program Now the next topic that we have is the Artemis One mission. See, Artemis missions, Artemis missions, जो है एक तीन missions है NASA के. What they are planning is after the Apollo mission, NASA did not really land on Moon. NASA Moon पर landing नहीं कर पाया है Apollo missions के बाद when it sent its astronauts on Moon and they landed and they brought a lot of observations and experiment and a and a lot of discoveries from that mission. So what they are planning is that to return human beings, that is to take again. human beings to the moon uh, because nasa has already done it so they are using the word return to take human beings to moon specifically the lunar south pole by 2025 so you know moon is basically it does not have a tilt ye jo isko polar areas hote hain moon ke the polar areas of moon they do not receive sunlight for example if your sun is here समवेयर एंड बिटवीन यू नो तो जो पोलर एरियाज होते हैं वहाँ पर बहुत ज़्यादा स्लैंटिंग लाइट्स जाती हैं सो इन पोलर एरियाज ऑफ मून स्पेशली द साउथ पोल अ लॉट ऑफ सन लाइट इज नॉट रिसीव सो जो यहाँ पर स्नो है दैट इज मिलियंस ऑफ ईयर्स ओल्ड तो जो मिलियंस ऑफ ईयर्स ओल्ड पहले जो केमिकल कॉम्पोजिशन था मून का या सोलर सिस्टम का दैट कुड बी स्टोर्ड हेयर सो वॉट दे आर प्लानिंग इज दे आर प्लानिंग टू सेंड ह्यूमन बींग्स टू द साउथ पोल ऑफ मून सो दैट अ लॉट ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड एक्सपेरिमेंट्स कैन बी कैरिड आउट Also, uh, just remember that this is just first part of the Artemis mission, Artemis One mission. 
इन द फ्यूचर वॉट इट वॉन्ट्स टू डू इज टेक ह्यूमन बींग्स इन टू स्पेस अब ह्यूमन बींग्स को अगर स्पेस में लेकर जाना है दे केन नॉट सेंड ह्यूमन बींग्स डायरेक्टली इन टू स्पेस सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अ टेस्टिंग मॉड्यूल और अ टेस्टिंग मिशन हैज बीन सेंट दैट इज नोन एज द आर्टमिस वन मिशन इन द सब्सिक्वेंट मिशन इन द आर्टमिस टू एंड आर्टमिस थ्री a woman astronaut would be sent a man of color would be sent a astronaut that would not be of white origin so they uh, more astronauts would be sent in the future artemis missions but this is just for uh, this is just for experimentation again sls rocket of nasa or uh, they've taken it from spacex sls rocket is the strongest rocket that they have as a country that has been used and this is देर इज सम स्पेस क्राफ्ट कॉल्ड ओरियन देखिए अगर कोई भी चीज़ ऑर्बिट में आ जाती है किसी प्लानट के या सैटेलाइट के uh, किसी प्लानट के या uh, उसकी नेचुरल सैटेलाइट के या मून के दैन दैट थिंक ऑर्बिटिंग द प्लानट इज़ नोन एज अ सैटेलाइट इफ दैट सैटेलाइट इज़ नॉट ऑर्बिटिंग इट इज जस्ट ट्रैवलिंग इन टू स्पेस देन इट इज़ नोन एज अ स्पेस क्राफ्ट सो ओरियन स्पेस क्राफ्ट है एंड एस एल एस रॉकेट है सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर आर्टमिस वन मिशन हैज नॉट टेकन ह्यूमन बींग्स इन टू स्पेस वॉट वील डू इज स्टेप वाइज लेट सी वॉट इज हैपनिंग ह्योर फ्रॉम ह्योर फ्रॉम द कैनेडी स्पेस सेंटर फ्लोरिडा जो स्पेस सेंटर्स होते हैं फ्रॉम वेयर रॉकेट्स आर लॉन्च दे आर ऑलवेज ऑन द ईस्टर्न कोस्ट क्योंकि आपकी जो अर्थ है वो यहाँ से यहाँ वेस्ट टू ईस्ट रोटेट करती है सो वेन अ रॉकेट इज लॉन्च फ्रॉम ह्योर द रोटेशन और द कोरियोलिस फोर्स ऑफ अर्थ एक्चुअली पुशेज इट फर्दर अगर आप इधर से रॉकेट लॉन्च करेंगे सो बेसिकली यू विल बी लॉन्चिंग इट इन टू स्पेस बट इट विल बी गोइंग समवेयर एल्स बिकॉज अर्थ की ऑपोजिट रोटेशन में होगा ऑल्सो दे आर ऑलवेज प्लेस नियर सी एरियाज वॉटर बॉडीज के आसपास प्लेस किए जाते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द रॉकेट फेल्स सो इट लैंड इन टू द सी इट डज नॉट लैंड इन टू सम लैंड बॉडी या कोई भी ह्यूमन हैबिटेशन को खराब नहीं करना चाहिए सो इन द फर्स्ट केस अनक्रूड फ्लाइट लॉन्च इज फ्रॉम कैनेडी स्पेस सेंटर इन फ्लोरिडा देन यू हैव फ्रॉम ह्योर यू लॉन्च दिस अनक्रूड मिशन फ्रॉम ह्योर योर ओरियन स्पेस क्राफ्ट आपका जो ओरियन स्पेस क्राफ्ट है दैट विल सेपरेट फ्रॉम द रेस्ट ऑफ द रॉकेट सिस्टम ओरियन स्पेस क्राफ्ट विल सेपरेट एंड इन द थर्ड in the third uh, step here orion is setting itself on its way to moon using a lot of transfer orbits transfer orbits hum log use karte hain uh, jo satellites ko hai spacecrafts ko hai spaceships ko bade orbits mein dalne ke liye so orion is uh, set on its course to the moon and after some time after a few steps it will start orbiting around the moon and again uh, it will uh, in the step 5 it will also have to come back to earth the special part here about orion is ki jo moon ki rotation hai around the earth it is taking the opposite direction to carry out observations around the moon so it is carrying out in the opposite direction and after a lot of revolutions for a few days this will come back to earth to land in the पैसिफिक ओशियन पैसिफिक ओशियन में क्यों लैंड करवा रहे हैं वाटर बॉडी में अगर लैंडिंग होती है सो क्रैश लैंडिंग के जो चांसेस होते हैं वो अवॉइड किए जा सकते हैं सो लैंडिंग विल हैपन ह्योर इन द पैसिफिक ओशियन इन द सेवन स्टेज ना वॉट एवर ऑब्जर्वेशन विल बी कैरिड आउट इन ऑल दीज स्टेजेस जो भी डिस्कवरीज जो भी एक्सपेरिमेंटल फॉल्स देखे जाएंगे वो नेक्स्ट आर्टमिस मिशन में आर्टमिस टू एंड आर्टमिस थ्री में यूज किए जाएंगे एंड ऑल दोज लर्निंग्स विल बी taken into consideration to avoid any kind of loss and damage when actual human beings are sent into space so again orion spacecraft is important in the uh, artemis 2 mission it will take a uh, take off around in 2024 the third artemis mission involving the orion spacecraft as well as spacex vehicle will aim to land astronauts on the moon surface jo aapka third artemis mission hoga that will plan to land astronauts on the moon surface the second artemis mission hai, it will just help them orbit around the moon and bring them back to earth so in the third final artemis mission jo ki i think 2025 ke aas pass planned hai again that will get delayed for sure weather conditions hote hain technical capabilities develop nahi hoti hai so they will land people on moon at least three people will land on the moon now see uh, what uh, why is moon important why is uh, you know artemis mission has been studied but why is moon important hum log chandrayaan launch kar rahe hain china is launching this chang e 4 mission or chang e mission so uh, 
जापान के बहुत सारे मून मिशन हैं यू एस इज लॉन्चिंग आर्टमिस इंडिया हैज़ लॉन्च चंद्रयान वी आर प्लानिंग चंद्रयान थ्री ऑल्सो बट वाई आर वी गोइंग टू द मून अगेन एंड अगेन हमें मून में इतना इंटरेस्ट क्यों है सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टू अंडरस्टैंड मून इज़ द ओनली नेचुरल सैटेलाइट ऑफ अर्थ एंड मून की अपनी कोई सैटेलाइट नहीं है सो हेयर यू हैव द अर्थ द मून इज ऑर्बिटिंग अराउंड द अर्थ इन अ स्पेसिफिकली डिफाइंड ऑर्बिट सो अनलाइक द अर्थ द मून डज नॉट हैव अ टिल्ट एज ए टोल्ड यू दैट जैसे कि अर्थ का टिल्ट है मून डज नॉट हैव अ टिल्ट इट इज वेरी स्ट्रेट तो जिसके पोलर एरियाज हैं दे डू नॉट रिसीव लॉट ऑफ सनलाइट सो स्नो इज हेयर आइस इज हेयर अ लॉट ऑफ आइस कैप्स आर देयर एंड दे कंटेंट द सीक्रेट्स ऑफ द मिस्ट्रीज ऑफ यूनिवर्स कि यूनिवर्स में जो जब मून बन रहा था उस टाइम पे जो जो केमिकल कॉम्पोजिशन थी दे आर स्टिल सेव्ड इन साइड दीज आइस शीट्स एंड carrying out research on them will tell uh, will tell us how this uh, how the solar system evolved so it is basically a geological time capsule bolte hain isko it is kind of a geological time capsule yes also they say that the boot prints of apollo astronauts who walked on the moon are स्टिल देयर एंड दे कैन बी सीन फ्रॉम द ऑर्बिट जो अपोलो के एस्ट्रोनॉट से जिन्होंने मून पर लैंड किया था उनके बूट प्रिंट्स अभी भी वैसे के वैसे हैं बिकॉज द मून डज नॉट हैव एन एटमोसफेयर सो सिंस द मून डज नॉट हैव एन एटमोसफेयर तो जो कंडीशन पहले थी वही कंडीशन अब भी हैं सो कैरिंग आउट रिसर्च ऑन द मून विल टेल यू अबाउट अगैन द मिस्ट्रीज ऑफ यूनिवर्स एंड मून ज़्यादा चेंज नहीं हुआ है बिकॉज अर्थ हैज विंड वाटर एंड अदर यू नो फैक्टर्स ऑफ एरोजन बट मून डज नॉट हैव दैट तो मून पर ज़्यादा चेंजेस नहीं होते सो इफ यू आर कैरिंग रिसर्च ऑन मून यू आर बेसिकली टैपिंग इन टू हिस्ट्री ऑल्सो विद द हेल्प ऑफ वेरियस technical experiments that we have carried out on moon with the help of experiments of isro and nasa water has been found on moon so we do not know water how much uh, in liquid form is available how much is it in fro- frozen form but yes moon cannot be our next home human beings cannot expect to stay on the moon kyunki wahan par atmosphere nahi hai there is just exosphere very thin atmosphere jisko hum exosphere bolte hain so the environment around is not breathable but again a lot of minerals a lot of water could be found which could help understand our origin origin of our life as human beings as living creatures secondly it could help us and aid us in our uh, uh, in how we live in the times to come so that is the importance of moon again uh, the pdf can be downloaded from the telegram channel that is uh, there in the description below take click on the link in the description it will take you to our telegram channel and download the pdf from there for this lecture try to attempt the question for seize the mains today it is about moon the entire content is available in the pdf so you'll not have to go here and there searching for what you have to write so yes uh, i'll see you with another discussion next week for our weekly current affairs session and today at 9 pm in sees the mates where we discuss the question that i gave you at the starting of this discussion again uh, this has been fruitful it has been a learning experience for us as well and we hope that this initiative is helping you stay uh, stay tuned to our channel if there are any doubts let us know in the comment section uh, not in the live chat section for now but in the comment section and we are, our team will respond back to your doubts and discussions whatever are they or also you can call us at the number for the administrative staff that is given in the description or email us at the email id provided i'll see you next week with another another discussion till then keep working hard and all the best